Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say Alexa or Hey Google, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Also, visit the Corvette Today website. It's corvettetodaypodcast.com. And while you're there, make sure you visit the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also sign up for Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And don't forget, join the Corvette Today Facebook group. We have over 3,000 members, and I'd love to have you as a member as well. I'm also excited to tell you about the new YouTube channel for Corvette Today. See your favorite Corvette Today podcasts now on YouTube. First, I'd like to thank our flagship sponsors of Corvette today, Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 unique design styles to choose from for your C8 and wide body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvette. It's an absurd value starting at only $19.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And use the promo code CT100 for Corvette Today 100 and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com. That's A-E-R-O-L-A-R-R-I.com. And use the promo code CT100 for your $100 discount. Also, Corvette Fever Magazine. Corvette Fever has been relaunched with an online and printed version. The online version has incredible interactivity with hidden photos and information, and the printed version is nothing like you've ever seen before, huge and glossy. Get your free online version at CorvetteFeverMag.com. You can also sign up for the printed version there as well. Corvette Fever Magazine, come along for the ride. Also, MidEngineCorvetteForum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at midenginecorvetteforum.com. Also, a shout-out to canadiancorvetteforum.com, welcoming Corvette owners from around the world. It's time to get the latest Corvette news and headlines with my buddy Keith Cornett from corvetteblogger.com. As you know, Keith is a regular guest on Corvette Today. He's here twice per month, every other week, to keep you up to date on what's happening with America's sports car. Keith, welcome back to the show as we enter the holiday season. we got lots to talk about, buddy. Hey, Steve. Glad to be here. And yes, we do. It's always great when Corvette news comes to us. It's fun that we get to talk about it here with you and your listeners. So let's get going. Sounds good, buddy. As we always do to start off Corvette news and headlines, we get an update on Corvette production in Bowling Green and the second shift is back at work. So give us the details on everything. Yeah. So we had a slowdown where we had to have the second shift basically stay home for two weeks. We got the confirmation last week on Monday that nope, they were going back and we've been following the production counts and they've very strong 185 184 each day of the week so it looks like it's going well again what happens when you're able to slow down production in this case you cut it in half you still have all the still coming into the factory so they're just being banked right now for any future stuff you know so hopefully they'll have some additional quantities there so if something goes low again they'll have the stock there to definitely get right on it we're gonna see this week the vin count will cross over seven thousand for the 2022s from here we'll have thanksgiving off but then production should run all the way through christmas time so big opportunity there to produce a lot of cars excellent that sounds good and we also got more good news chevrolet announces the 2023 order and startup production dates. That's great to hear. Yeah, this is kind of a surprise. Normally, they've been holding this information close to the chest. And the rumor is that Chevrolet had released it without the Corvette team being able to say, don't release it. So we don't know if that's true or not, but that just seems to be the case because what we're seeing is the 2022 is much earlier than initially thought. Usually we hear July or August. That's always kind of been the traditional turnover for the model year. But now we're looking at 2022 production ending on March 6th. Wow. Which means that the final last order of 22s will be put in on March 17th. 
think about first quarter now, as we're leading into the 2022s, the end of the 2022s and 2023s, we're probably going to be getting notices January, February of cars of colors that might be going away. Obviously, we'll have information on the 2023s, like pricing should be out there. So it's going to be a shorter year for the 2022s, but it looks like it's because they really want to get those 2023 Corvette Z06s out on the road. We're actually looking at the initial production start for the 2023s to be May 9th, which is pretty early, like I said. First allocation in the order entry periods will happen March 31st. And then the only thing we don't know is the pre-order date. Think about the end of February, beginning of March, where dealers are actually able to go in and start adding orders to the system. They're accepted, but they're not accepted for production. You get like the 1100 status. So the orders are in there, but they're basically just banked until then they start doing the allocation processes and matching up those orders to the allocation slot. Pretty exciting, though. It just is going to make next year a whole lot of fun with the, the Z06s. We're going to see them all summer long. They should be at all the major shows over the summer, so it's going to be fun. I can't wait, buddy. This sounds good. Also, GM notified the National Highway Safety Commission about a dual-clutch transmission investigation. That was interesting. What's going on with that? Yeah, we've had reports of people having trouble with their transmissions. Specifically, what they're looking at here is debris that causes the park sensor magnet to not see that it's in park. And so what happens is people are unable to turn off their cars. So that's one of the things. And then the other thing they're looking at, too, is the filters. As a new C8 owner, you get 7,500 miles and then they'll filter on that. So within a year of you owning the car, generally you'll have the oil change and then you can change the transmission filter. So they're taking a closer look at those as well. They're actually bagging them and actually sending them up to Detroit for review. They're going to get to the bottom of this. It seems like the transmission problems are starting to slow down in terms of what we've been hearing a lot of. I think that's good news for Corvette owners moving forward. Definitely is. Also, GM showed a 10.6 second quarter mile with the new Z06. Man, that's awesome. Again, this is another leak. We don't want to say a leak because it wasn't intentional, but it just seems like sometimes the left hand doesn't know that the right hand is doing something. We were out at SEMA. The cars were there. They were on display. Of course, we went through the whole rigmarole, the reveal, and at the Peterson, and everybody's seen the cars. There's people seeing the cars in Detroit, but they've held back the performance numbers. Now the car was on display in Phoenix for the final NASCAR race of the season. And there was this promotional board next to it that showed 670 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. And then the third picture was quarter mile time of 10.6 seconds. It's an official number. It comes from their promotional billboard next to the car. What we don't know yet is trap speed of that quarter mile. Some have been trying to go backwards with it. And they put the time somewhere around 130, 131, 132 miles an hour. We'll just have to wait for that. But we're getting all this information. Like I said, GM has this information in place and we're just basically finding it here, finding it there. And in certain cases, we're able to pry it out of them. It's been a fun few weeks since the Z06 has come out and there are just so many people excited about this car. Absolutely right. Well, buddy, let's take our first break. And in segment number two, we're going to talk about Corvette racing. We also have some juicy rumors coming up on Corvette Today. Stretch the life of your Corvette's paint with Nova Stretch Performance Protective Covers. Nova Stretch covers provide superior protection for your C5 through C8 Corvette, utilizing stretch fabric technology and an innovative fastening system for quick installation and easy removal and storage. Made in the USA for a tailored fit, the patented design and breathable mesh protects your Corvette without rubbing or chafing the paint like traditional bras. And unlike clear film solutions, Nova Stretch provides full front end coverage, including the grill, keeping radiators and heat exchangers clean without creating airflow issues. Visit NovaStretch.com and use the code CorvetteToday15 to get 15% off your order. Protect your Corvette with Nova Stretch. American Hydrocarbon, your one-stop shop for custom interior, exterior, and engine bay items for your C4 through C8 Corvette. We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. We've served customers in over 28 countries all around the world. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 mid-engine Corvette or custom-made C4 interior upgrades, American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. Our products have been featured in Vet and Corvette magazines, so give us a call 
813-476-5638. That's 813-476-5638. And now we're proud to announce that we can produce and distribute officially licensed GM products with a C8 Corvette. That includes the front splitter, the side skirts, engine appearance panels, and engine fluid caps. See everything on our new updated website, AmericanHydrocarbon.com. You're listening to the Corvette Today podcast with Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. By the way, all these stories we talk about, you can find the full information at CorvetteBlogger.com. In the second segment, we're going to talk about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors. First in the racing segment, Keith, Corvette Racing's 250th event was last weekend at Petit Le Mans. Now, we record this show the Friday before that weekend, so we'll have all the details, but that's a big deal, going to Petit Le Mans. Petit Le Mans, if you've never been to a race there, it's just a fun track. You'll walk your butt off because of the elevation. You go up these hills and down your hills, and by the end of the day, you're dead beat. But it's a great track, plenty of places to watch the viewing. And, of course, it's always the end of the season, so we get to see what's going to happen with the championship. This year, we already know the number three Corvette only has to start the race, and then they've won the championship. So it's an exciting time, but yet this year, they kind of wrapped everything up early. So not exactly the cliffhanger moment that we sometimes like to wait for at the end of the race, but we'll take it, obviously. It's another championship for Chevrolet. This is also... in. This kind of blew my mind. It's the 250th racing event for the team since their very first outing at the Rolex 24 in 1999. Think about that. I know NASCAR, they'll race almost every weekend and they just rack it up. But for us, sports car racing, you know, when you have like eight, nine, 10 events a year, maybe 11 with the Le Mans, you know, it obviously takes time to rack up 250 racing events. So it's a huge milestone for the team. I just remember back in the day, they were just a scrappy racing team. They had the Take No Prisoners rallying cry and a Skull logo. And look how far they've come today. So it's it's just been an amazing run. And hopefully we're going to see many more. Absolutely. That is so darn cool. I love it. Also, Corvette Racing is going to go global next year, Keith. They introduced the GT3R for 2024. There's a lot of racing coming up next year and the years to come. Yeah, I think this is what we wanted. Obviously, there's still some things that are up in the air once you hit the 2024 season. As we've talked about previously, Le Mans, they're actually talking about getting away from the pro cars in GT3 at Le Mans. So we'll have to figure out what they're going to do about that. But we're still a whole two years off from that. What we're going to see next year is our two-car team is going to be split. The number three car is going to stay here, and it's going to have Jordan Taylor and Antonio Garcia, and they're going to defend their championship here in IMSA. And then you're going to have the number four car, which is going to actually be the number 64 car, travel, and they're going to do the FIA World Endurance Championship. We love this idea. This will have Tommy Milner and Nick Tandy in the car. and They're going to do that FAWEC schedule, which again travels to most of the different continents on the world. And now we're selling cars. So if we're selling cars in Japan and we race in Japan, that's even better for the team, better for marketing. It makes a whole lot more sense for us to be there. So we're going to see next year's season with the car split between the two different series. And then they'll come together, hopefully, at Le Mans, where we'll have a two-car effort there. We've also been hearing some rumors. We're trying to figure out what's going to happen. But we might also see a couple more pairing up in IMSA for maybe some of the endurance races. They might field a second car over here. I don't know if we'll ever field two cars over in Europe that's not Le Mans. But I could definitely see us running a second car over here with some former drivers or, you know, some new up-and-comers. So it could be a really interesting time for Corvette Racing. The other component to this is... But with next year, we're specking out our car from GTLM now to the GT3 spec. But the really exciting news that also accompanied this press release was in 2024, there's actually going to be a customer GT3 car program set up by Chevrolet where they're going to be selling these race cars to the public. Wow. That's very exciting. So teams then could grab a car and they could race in like the GT, the amateur series in IMSA while we're racing in the GT Pro series. So more Corvettes on the track is always something that I think has been much needed. Again, this car just looks like a beast. We don't really have a lot of details of it other than it's spec to the GT3 specs. But that's the way that the global sports car racing series is are headed. Glad that we're going to be right there in the mix. I like the car. It looked good with the American flag on the side of it. And speaking of GT3 racing, Racer Magazine thinks that Corvette and Mustang will compete starting in 2024 in the GT3 series. 
Yeah, you know, this was one of the rumors. So I guess this was a rumor that kind of came out before because we had actually posted that story literally two hours before the press release broke on all the actual confirmations that we just got. Ford says that they are definitely looking at IMSA and running a Ford Mustang program in GTD as well. Whether they go GTD Pro or GTD Amateur with customer cars remains to be seen, but we never really feel like we compete against Mustang as a brand. But if you think about it, the Ford Mustang and the Chevrolet Corvette are just two of the most iconic American cars over the last 60 years. It'd be fun to do that. We do see Camaro and Mustang race in NASCAR, but it's not the same as these customer cars, factory race cars going and doing battle each weekend. There's all kinds of potential scenarios like this that are showing up. Again, it's kind of exciting now that we're starting to get these pieces falling in place for the racing and see what's going to happen over the next few years. Absolutely right, buddy. And also another big juicy rumor, GM may offer the C8 Z06, the LT6 engine, as a crate engine. Is that coming true? Well, it would make sense. This is generally what they do is, you know, their engine production, once they meet the demands for producing in the cars, there might be some engines that are set aside. This engine is such a bespoke engine. That's what they call it, bespoke, because it's only for the Corvette. It's going nowhere else. And so they're going to guard it for a while. And then also, you know, each of these engines is handmade. We've been trying to figure out exactly... You can do the LT4. I think they could do like one and a half or maybe one and a quarter in a typical eight hour day. We're hearing that this engine might take a little bit more than a day to put together. So you could have some factors like that. It just means that the supply is just not going to be there because as you've seen, everybody's trying to order a Z06. The engines that are building are going to definitely go into those production cars as a priority. So it could happen. If it does, we can imagine a huge price tag on it, upwards of $25,000 or more, like the recently retired LT5 engine that was in the 2019 ZR1. Very cool. And speaking of that LT6 engine, that LT6 engine is shown when you start up your C8Z06 in the startup screen. This is pretty cool. Our friend Rick Conti was able to snag a video showing that you get in the car and there's the little startup animation screen on the dash. And so this starts with those dual intake manifolds and then it just kind of morphs into the rear of the car and then it turns around and shows us the side of the car. And it's a Z07 with the rear wing on it. And you can see the dive planes on the front. Again, just something neat, startup animation when you get in the car. And I know people like that kind of stuff. We had a user that said, you know what would be really cool is if General Motors could customize the startup screen so that it would be your car that you see so if you had like an elkhart lake blue convertible that's what you would see in the startup screen i think that would be a pretty cool idea that'd be awesome that's for sure well buddy let's take our final break and in segment number three we'll talk about the lighter side of corvette here on corvette today vetfinders.com is the internet's original corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just 25 dollars, and every ad runs until your corvette is sold if you're in the market for a corvette vetfinders.com has over 500 corvettes for sale from all around the usa and canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E, Finders.com. Hey, honey, are you awake? Mm, I am now. I can't sleep. Since turning 50, I keep dreaming of a red door and a blue door, somehow knowing there are only choices for retirement. Okay. Through the red door, we outlive our money. We have to rely on our kids. We're stuck on a fixed income. It's terrifying. Yeah, that would suck. But through the blue door, our money outlives us. We retire on our terms. Our kids stay our kids, not our caretakers. We make work optional. Yes, that's much better. That's what I want to, but what do we do? We call True Wealth and Company at 913-653-8783. They specialize in helping successful people make work optional. They're our fiduciary Blue Door personal wealth managers. Hey, where are you going? It's 3 a.m. I can't sleep. I'm going to check out True Wealth and Company online at retirewithtrue.com. That Blue Door is going to be our retirement. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth and Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Hey, thank you very much for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett. We keep you up to date on what's happening with America's favorite sports car. In this third and final segment, we talk about the lighter side of Corvette, some of the etc. stuff. And this is really cool, Keith. Don Yanko's 1968 L88 Corvette that raced at Daytona and Sebring is now for sale. 
it's very rare that these kinds of really prominent race cars come up for sale. This one has a really neat backstory. They call this the showroom racer. The story goes, Sunray DX was a petroleum products company out in Oklahoma. They wanted to go racing and showcase their products. They formed the Sunray DX racing team, which is only around for a few years. They hired Don Yanko as their racer and the fabricator, and he was going to run the team. Now, he had ordered a 1968 L88 from the factory, but the problem was that they weren't going to have it in time to go racing at Daytona with it. He also had a Chevrolet showroom in Pennsylvania, so he went out to his dealership. On the showroom floor was a 1968 L71, which is the 427, 435 horse, top of the line streetcar. He took that out and took it back to the shop and dropped a factory L88 engine into it. And made a bunch of other modifications, and they took that car to Daytona, where it would finish second in its class. So it earned the nickname, the showroom racer, because it came right off the showroom floor and went racing. So then they went to Sebring with the car. The really cool thing of the Sebring race was that Yanko would team up with the famous Ferrari driver, Pedro Rodriguez. This was the only time that Pedro ever drove a Corvette. He became very well known as a Ferrari driver. And in that race, the showroom L88 would set a new GT class record. But then they had ended up retiring in lap 43 over some issues. So that was basically the big races. They were going to take it to Le Mans, but there was some turmoil over there. There were student protests and all kinds of factory shutdowns. And eventually, like gas supplies became real low and transportation was halted. Yanko basically kept the car. The Sunray DX team got bought by Sunoco. And of course, Sunoco already had Roger Penske running their team, so they didn't need two teams. So Don Yanko kept the car and he would just race it around in SCCA and actually won one of the Midwest championships, I believe, in that car. So this car has been around for a while. The next people that owned it had all raced it, too. The latest owner that got it had it refurbished back to the Sebring livery with the number two on it. It's a red, white, and blue car. It's just a really neat story. And if you like Corvette racing history, this one should definitely be one that you look up on. This car is for sale by a company out of Connecticut called GT Motor Cars. It's just a fabulous car that would be obviously the center point of any collection. And also speaking of significant Corvettes for sale, there's a 1957 Corvette Supersport that's going for auction coming up at Mecham Kissimmee. This is another car that really a lot of people don't know about. So in 1957, this car made the rounds of the GM Motorama shows. Think about 1957, what was significant there? Well, obviously the biggest change for Corvette was fuel injection and the four-speed transmission. And this car had both of them. This car might even be one of the very first cars shown to the public with the fuel injection. And of course, it's a speedster. So it's got the cut down windshields on it. The car was on the parade, the GM Motorama parade around the country. And then when it was over, it was basically sold. And the story goes that some guy out in, I believe, Albuquerque had the car for a few years. And then it got damaged or wrecked and it was just put away. There was a guy named John Baldwin who got the car in 97, ended up restoring it. And then it showed it for really the first time. So the first time it was really seen in 60 years was at the 2017 Amelia Island concourse there. Not a lot of people have ever seen this car. We're excited to see what it's going to go for in Kissimmee. We know this car has been previously listed for sale on some different car sites, including our own BetFinders website, for a couple million dollars. But the auction price is the true price, and that's when you get two people who determine what that car price is going to be. So we'll see we can Kissimmee exactly what this really neat car goes for. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That should be big money. That's for sure. Also, we have details Two companies have put out new superchargers for the C8 Corvette, Lingenfelter and Prochargers. Give us the details on both of those. Yeah, so we'll start with Lingenfelder first. They showed their car out at SEMA, and what they've done is they've teamed up with Magnuson Superchargers, and they're using Magnuson's TVS 2650 to sort of serve as the heart of the beast here. Lingenfelder is estimating that the power increase goes from 495 stock to 705 horsepower. We know that they've been testing the system for almost a year now. They've really done a nice job. It looks nice. There's a lot to it. This is what they're calling their current Stage 1 that operates on six PSI boost, and then they're working on actually a stage two with higher boost pressures and then obviously more horsepower. We don't really have a price yet on this, but again, on our website, and if you go to Lingenfelder as well, you can find out more details on how they've actually put this together. 
On the other side, we just had an announcement last week that Procharger, who has also been working on their supercharger kit for a little over a year now, is now shipping. Their C8 supercharger kit estimates 675 horsepower, although sometimes I've seen them say 675 plus. And again, they're doing it at six and a half PSI boost on 93 octane. Their performance figures show that the zero to 60 mile an hour times will be reduced by three tenths of a second. You're looking at an eight additional mile per hour in the quarter mile and a reduced of lap times, of course, on a road course. Again, these are bolt-on systems, require no permanent modifications to your car, so you can go back. There's a little bit more to the Procharger system as well. I would definitely go and take a look if you're interested in supercharging your C8 Stingray to go check out these two different systems. We have videos on our site. And of course, you can go to Lingenfelder and Procharger to see theirs as well. And speaking of aftermarket manufacturers, it was interesting that I saw that Borla's Catback exhaust system now becomes an official C8 accessory. Tell us the backstory on that as well. Yeah, this is pretty cool. We don't actually have a lot of information on it. At SEMA, there was a couple Corvettes shown in the Chevrolet. There was a, actually a C8 Stingray. You would like this, Steve. It was basically a carbon fiber edition Stingray that GM was using to show off all their accessories on there. Awesome. But on the placard, as you're reading down, this car didn't have it, but it showed also available, and it showed the Borla catback exhaust system. Borla has been working on their system for a year. It is out now. I think it is actually one of the better sounding exhaust systems that that Corvette owners could add to their cars just by the videos that I see. I haven't heard one in person. I know that they did a really outstanding job of engineering the system, and I think that might be one of the real reasons why Chevy was interested in then adding them as an official accessory because of the work that they did there. This system, we found it for sale somewhere around, it's going to retail about $47.50. But we found some GM resellers, although it's not ready to go yet. It's slated for fourth quarter 2021, so anytime now. But we found a couple of resellers that had a price of 4100 on it. And the nice thing is that you decide to do this, talk to your Chevy dealer, you might be able to have this added during the PDI of your car as a genuine Corvette accessory that kind of takes some of the guesswork of, okay, if I buy this, who's going to install it for me? That kind of worry that I know some of us have sometimes about who's working on our cars. Absolutely. And we have another feel-good story, Keith. Another senior citizen was moved to the front of the line to get his 2022 C8 Corvette Stingray. Yeah, this is a great story. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Bavacqua, who started flying out of high school, he's like, I need a job, and turned to the Air Force. They were hiring pilots with only high school degrees. He ended up flying in Korea. And then he got asked if he wanted to do something a little more interesting that he couldn't be told about. And of course, he said yes. And then he ended up being one of the first pilots of the U-2 spy planes. Wow. And then he moved into the SR-71 Blackbirds. Really cool story there. He talks in this video that he did with the local television station. He talks about some of his history. What had happened was a dealer there locally had seen a couple other veterans move to the front of the list. He had known Tony personally. I guess Tony had owned several Corvettes and just decided that was a good thing to do. So an 89-year-old Tony Bavacqua got his new C8 Corvette Stingray and the 89-year-old is driving around and couldn't be happier. So we're very excited for him. And again, congratulations. I know some people might complain, well, that was my spot on the list. I guess this guy had a spot on the list. They just moved him to the front because some things just can't wait. And that dealer, by the way, was Wheeler Chevrolet in Yuba City, California, that made that happen. So congratulations to them. Very nice. That's a great story. Also, another great story. It was interesting. I guess I'm going to have to be the second person to drive the new Z06, Z07. But Jay Leno got the first drive outside of GM. Yeah, he's been able to do this twice. He's such a great spokesperson for the car, any car really, but he loves Chevrolet products. He loves his Corvettes. As he's talking about the new 2023 Corvette Z06, he keeps referring back to his C5 car, which he says is just one of his favorite cars in his entire collection. If you've seen one of these videos, they run about 30 minutes. And so he does like this in-studio portion. He's joined by Aaron Link, who is the lead development engineer on the Z06. After they do this walk around, they go for a drive. And that's really where the fun is. You now, all of a sudden, you just hear that car just wind all the way up to the red line. And the amazing thing, again, when he does that on the streets, you know, you think you're punching it, you know, you're accelerating hard. And that car is just very stable. He's not going, ooh, it's like the back end's like twitchy or anything like that. It just lays down the power and off they go. This was the top video on YouTube for Corvettes last week. It was one of our biggest posts on the Z06 so far. If you haven't seen this video, I would definitely make some time. Get your favorite beverage out, sit down and enjoy it because it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun for sure. It was a great video. And finally, Keith, we have another YouTube video on the top 10 differences between the C8 Z06 and the Stingray. That was also an interesting watch as well. 
Yeah, this was from Edmonds. They own their own C8 Stingray. Somehow in their location out in California, they were able to get the Z06 in their studio for the day. And so they did this really fun top 10 differences between the Z06 and the Stingray, which they had side by side. You know, you think, oh, well, that's pretty easy to run through. But the list is actually pretty good. They talk noise and the power and the torque and the crankshaft and the performance and brakes and tires, the interior and the price. They kind of go through there. But again, when you hear this exhaust note and the host of this video was Edmund's Alistar Weaver was standing behind the car, bent down near the exhaust pipes when they did the cold start. And then when it revved, the motor popped, the exhaust popped like it's been doing, and it nearly made him run away. It had to have been so loud. <laughs> it's a fun video. The other thing they do, too, is in these categories, they'll say the winner of this one was the Z06, or the winner of this one was the Stingray. So it's interesting to see how they were able to apply those winners to the different categories. Again, just another fun video, a little bit different. And for those of you that own the C8 Stingray already or are thinking about Z06 or want the Z06, it'd be a fun video to watch. Definitely. Keith, thanks so much for being on Corvette today. Love having you here. We'll talk to you in two weeks, just in time for Thanksgiving. Well, thanks so much, Steve. Great being here. You guys, check out CorvetteBlogger.com for all the latest news, headlines, and we will be back in two weeks with Steve to do it all again. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today, and please be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today podcast. And also, thanks to our flagship sponsors, American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com, True Wealth & Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels, get $100 off your purchase with the promo code CT100 at Aerolari.com. Also, Nova Stretch Bras. Use the code Corvette Today 15 and get 15% off your total purchase at NovaStretch.com. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at Steve Garrett DJ. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.